Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our webinar on VITA programs, boost capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. My name is Michael Rush, and I'm with the National Disability Institute. Before we get started, we would like to go over some housekeeping tips. Next slide, please. Listening to the webinar, the audio for today's meeting can be accessed using computer audio or by calling in by phone. If you select computer audio, please make sure your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. If you do not have sound capabilities on your computer or prefer to listen by phone, you can dial 1-929-205-6099. Please enter meeting code 829-1398-6516. Next slide, please. Captioning. Real-time captioning is provided during this webinar. The captions can be found by clicking on the CC or show caption button in your Zoom controls at the bottom of your screen. Next slide, please. Submitting questions. Please use the Q&A box to submit any questions you have during the webinar and we will direct them accordingly. If, you question, excuse me, if your question is not answered during the webinar or you're listening by phone and not logged in, you can email your question to my colleague, Kish Pisani at kpisani at ndi-inc.org. Next slide. Technical assistance. If you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box to send a message to the NDI host or email Kish Pisani at kpisani at ndi-inc.org. Please note the webinar is being recorded and you will receive an email with the, the YouTube link within a week. The materials will be placed on the National Disability Institute website at www.nationaldisabilityinstitute.org slash financial dash wellness slash taxes. Next slide. Great. Now that we're through the housekeeping tips, um, reminder, if you have any questions or technical issues, please put them in the chat box. As I mentioned, my name is Michael Rausch, and I'm the director of the Center for Disability Inclusive Community Development at the National Disability Institute. Today, we're talking about boosting capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. Today, we're gonna to be sharing with you um, various tools and resources and hearing from a partner on their work in serving taxpayers with disabilities. Today is December 1st, never too early for us to start talking about the next tax season. As today, we share some lessons learned. We've listened to our network. We've heard from you um, from both the disability and non-disability community on what are some of those tools, resources, and questions you have um, regarding VITA uh, services and free tax preparation services. So today, we hope that you will find uh, today's webinar very beneficial as you gear up for your tax season, um, the tax upcoming tax season with various tools and resources that you can use to boost your, um, your efforts to serve taxpayers with disabilities. Next slide, please. So for those of you on the line who might be new um, to the National Disability Institute, just really quickly before I turn it over to one of our special guests, I just want to share with you that the National Disability Institute is a national nonprofit. We're dedicated to building a better economic future for people with disabilities. The National Disability Institute, you may not be aware of, but we were or are the first national organization committed exclusively to championing economic empowerment, financial education, 
asset development, and financial stability for all persons with disabilities. At the National Disability Institute, we affect change through public education, policy development, training, technical assistance, and innovative initiatives. You can learn more about the National Disability Institute at nationaldisabilityinstitute.org. Next slide. We would like to give a special thank you. Um, today's webinar is hosted with the support from our friends at Share Our Strength, um, who have um, are supporting our tax work at the National Disability Institute to increase the awareness on serving taxpayers with disabilities. Next slide, please. Today, we're very fortunate to have Anna Maria Rivera, who's the program manager for family economic mobility at Share Our String, who has joined us to share a few words with us. Anna, I'll turn it over to you, and thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for your support in supporting the education of taxpayers with disabilities. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, as Michael introduced me, um, I am the program manager here at Share Strength. Been here at Share Strength for three years now. I'm tuning in from Brentwood, Maryland. Um, for those of you who are in Maryland, I know we have the cash campaign on the line, um, but it is a pleasure to be with you all today. Um, Share Strength's mission is to end uh, hunger and poverty in the U.S. and abroad. We do that through our campaigns like No Kid Hungry, um, which uh, ends childhood hunger in the United States, and Cooking Matters, um, which helps low-income families learn to shop and cook healthier. Um, through our campaign, Share, Share Strength has done much to help solve childhood hunger in the United States, but we know it takes more than food to fight hunger. Um, ending it, it is impossible without addressing economic inequality and generational poverty. Um, so Share Strength developed and launched the Family Economic Mobility Strategy, which is the team I am on, um, alongside the No Kid Hungry campaign to help ra uh, raise families um, out of poverty. Um, so this year and beyond, this work uh, focuses on connecting more low-income families to important tax credits. Um, and our efforts um, only works if families know about the credits, enroll, and get their taxes done in a free and non-predatory settings. Um, so the way that we do that uh, is through the 10 state community of practice, which Michael and NDI is part of. Um, and we are so honored and pleasured to partner with them to ensure that the disability communities that we're serving um, are included and get the credits that they deserve. Um, we have 10 different states included in that community of practice, um, which is California, Florida, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Mississippi, New York, Ohio, Texas, and Virginia. We also have OISTA, um, who provides uh, technical assistance and tax assistance to our Native American um, communities across um, Minnesota, South Dakota, um, and um, uh, California, I believe. Um, there's one other state, but I, it's slipping my mind right now. Um, but essentially, uh, we've partnered with 21 organizations to uh, do tax assistance and outreach, um, and we're more effective because of NDI and Michael. Um, so we appreciate all the work um, that you all do and, and putting these webinars on. Thank you again for having me on here. Great. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, thank you for supporting um, this uh, work. Um, and uh, bringing the awareness to taxpayers with disabilities. So thank you. So as we get started in our program, we just want to ask four quick um, polling questions that we're going to ask you. So they're all going to pop up, but I'm going to go through and read them. So note that on our webinar, we have a diverse audience. We have free tax preparation by the programs. We also have individuals with disabilities. We have family members and we have disability service providers, and we have government agencies. So we're going to ask four different questions. If it doesn't apply to you, feel free just to mark not applicable. But I'm going to read the questions, and um, if you're unable to use the polling box, 
that just popped up on your screen, feel free to put your response in the chat box as well. So the first question is, does your free tax preparation VITA program currently serve taxpayers with disabilities? Your choices are yes, no, or not applicable. The next question is, if you are with a free tax preparation VITA program, how confident are you in your outreach efforts to taxpayers with disabilities? You can choose very confident, somewhat confident, not confident at all, or not applicable. And as you see the box on, the, on your screen of the polling questions, you can just um, use uh, the bar on the right hand side and scroll down and you'll go to the next one. Again, if you're unable to use the chat or the box, feel free to put your answers in the chat box. And the third question, if you are a free tax prepper, if you're with a free tax preparation VITA program, how confident are you in making accommodation requests for taxpayers with disabilities? Very confident, somewhat confident, not confident at all, or not applicable. And then the last question, if you are a person with a disability, a family member, or a disability service provider, have you used the VITA free tax preparation service in the past? You can say yes, no, not sure, or not applicable. So with that, answer the last question. I see some have come in the chat box. Thank you so much. Um, and Ashley, if we can please see the responses. All right. So in looking at the responses, it looks like 44% saying that VITA programs say that you currently serve taxpayers with disabilities. Um, okay, so thank you for doing that. If you're a VITA site, 22% um, said that you're confident in your outreach efforts, 14% said somewhat, and 8% said not confident at all. Um, so for those of you who have said somewhat or not confident, boy, is today the webinar for you to be at, because I think you'll really benefit from the various tools and outreach materials that are going to be shared with you. Next question, if you are free tax preparation, how confident are you in making accommodation requests? 20% um, 20 20 said somewhat confident and 7% said not confident at all. So we will definitely be sharing with you some resources that are gonna hopefully help build your confidence in that. And when it comes to asking individuals with disabilities, family members, um, have you used the VITA site? It's about half um, to yes and about half to no. So um, you'll learn more resources here in just a moment. So thank you so much for sharing um, those responses. Great. Um, next slide, please. So what I'm going to do over the next 15 minutes or so, um, just share with you some new resources and tools to boosting capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. As I mentioned at the beginning, um, over the past six months, I think since July, um, we've been working with various pilot sites as well as talking with our various network members um, and others um, through our webinar series and, and office hours on what you need to increase capacity um, to serve um, taxpayers with disabilities, or if you are a disability organization, what do you need to um, increase or feel more confident to be able to um, partner with your VITA tax program? And so with um, the information that we've heard, we've developed some new materials as well as updated our website. Please note that um, there's still more to come um, based on the needs that you um, have shared um, from the VITA site um, side, as well as the disability service provider side, um, of what you need or what would be beneficial. But we have a start of, um, of addressing some of those items. Um, as we share those um, new items with you, as you, as you listen to this, if you think of additional items that would benefit you to boost your capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities, 
Um, please send them to the chat box or send them to myself or my colleague, Kish Kasani. And um, it's something that we'll be able to look at um, further. But let's get started to share with you um, the different programs that are new things that we have. So first of all, with the support that we had, we were able to um, update our website and that really serves as a depository for um, information, not only for individuals about um, taxes, but also for VITA programs, as well as for disability service programs. And actually, let me back up, I'm so sorry. As I talk about VITA, for those of you who may not be familiar with the VITA program, VITA stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So VITA for short. Um, so the website has three audiences that you will be able to um, uh, go to. So if you go to the National Disability Institute's website, you click on financial wellness at the top of the screen, you'll scroll down and then you'll go on to the link about taxes and tax preparation services. There you'll see um, uh, our past webinars regarding taxes, as well as it will give you information and overview on free tax preparation services and why it's important for individuals with disabilities. Next slide, please. So on this slide is a screenshot of one of the pages of the website. And at the top, it says community organization service providers and employers encouraged to use these free resources to help increase awareness of free tax preparation options and services. Please note the key word here is free. These are all free resources that you can access. So this particular page um, provides information on how to partner with the Internal Revenue Service and it takes you to links um, that you can um, learn more about. Also on how to locate a VITA site near your um, near you. Um, if you're interested in becoming a VITA volunteer, that was something we covered in our last month's webinar, which was had a great response to. Um, and how to contact um, uh, or connect to learn how to volunteer. Um, so this particular website. Um, our page of the website provides some of those information on developing those partnerships. One of the key things in this section is what many VITA programs have shared with us is how and who do we partner with in our communities. So here you will be able to access a quick reference guide on identifying disability partners in your community. So this quick reference guide will help you identify those key partners for you to outreach in your local area. Next slide, please. So as we looked and listened, we also heard about having a one-stop location where individuals can go to find all of the various other outreach materials that are available. So on our website, there is a drop-down menu that you'll be able to go to on importance of spreading the word. And here you will see um, various links um, that you can access that have um, different outreach materials that you can access, like the Get It Back campaign. Um, also links to different social media toolkits um, that different organizations have put together and have passed on. So we've created this, this location that you'll be able to um, go to to um, see what of this, which of these items that benefit or that you can use to um, in your outreach. But hold on, because you're gonna see some new outreach materials too that we developed that you'll be able to access free of charge as well. Next slide, please. Um, I should, it should be noted that after this webinar, as I mentioned before, you're gonna get access to all of these links and um, the slides. So you're gonna have access to all of these materials. Um, the uh, next slide that says here is developing free tax preparation programs um, in our previous webinar. It um, talked about with the Internal Revenue Service about talked about um, how to become a VITA volunteer, about possibly hosting a VITA site. Um, and so um, this particular uh, page um, helps to look at what type of um, a free tax preparation program you might like to develop or what 
you how you would like to support it if you're not already a VITA program. Next slide, please. Also on the website, you'll also find a link and um, uh, a section that states expanding free tax preparation in the deaf community. And so this particular section provides information um, that you can learn more about in increasing your outreach to the deaf community. Um, provides tips on um, marketing materials, um, who to connect with in your local communities. Um, and on here is also links that you can access to connect with the statewide services for individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing in your state. We also included a link to the IRS videos that they have created that are in American Sign Language. So um, many of our sites have asked about what are those specific resources so again, you'll be able to go to our website and, and see that. One of the things that we hope to do in the new year is highlight some additional best practices of how VITA programs are being um, serving um, the deaf and hard of hearing community. So um, be on the lookout for that in the new year as well. Next slide, please. So, as I mentioned, one of the audiences, in addition to VITA programs, is for resources for taxpayers with disabilities as well, that you can guide them to this site as well. So, for example, there's helpful information and quick reference guides that individuals can access. Tax time is a great time for individuals to open an ABLE account, which is a tax advantage savings account for individuals with disabilities. So we have a quick reference guide on ABLE accounts and tax time savings. Also, if you're working with individuals um, from a, the disability community, a non-VITA site, and an individual says, um, oh, I can't afford to have file my taxes, we have a quick reference guide for them. You just direct them to that quick link, and it's going to provide them everything they need to know about getting their taxes done. There's also quick reference guides on managing your money, understanding public benefits, and these are quick reference guides. So as a tax site, it's a tax volunteer, if you're working with an individual and they happen to say, um, you know, I'm going to lose my benefits, we well, can go to the website, type in that whatever they say, I can't afford or I can't find, and the quick reference guide will come up if the one's available, that will provide them with more information. So there's a additional resources that you will be able to guide them as well. Next slide, please. So with all of our resources, now I'm going to share some resources that are specifically for free tax preparation sites and VITA sites to really boost capacity. I know we're going through some of the resources rather quickly because this webinar we just wanted to share with you kind of an overview of what the resources are. You can see there's been a quite a few resources developed and that people can access. Um, but after the webinar, you'll be able to go in and dive in a little bit deeper in the different pieces. But the next few slides are specific items that are available to VITA sites to boost um, capacity. So first of all, um, on the website, there's a section that says, ensure your free tax prep site is accessible to all, including persons with disabilities. So these are great materials to be used for site coordinators, for your training programs when you are providing training to VITA volunteers. So an example is making sure your volunteers are aware of people first language. Um, there's also a quick reference guide on selecting an interpreter, handouts on making accommodation requests, why ask the disability um, questions, as well as the question that we get quite a bit is making sure your website and technology is accessible. And we have a link here for some of those resources as well. As we go through the next few slides, I'm just going to highlight um, some of them uh, that you um, go a little bit deeper in some of these that were, were just mentioned. Next slide, please. 
So here we have a disability script. So many years ago, we surveyed VITA volunteers. Then we went back and we asked VITA volunteers again um, recently and um, about the intake form and the disability questions that are on the intake form. And you would think like, hey, it's on the form, we answer the question and things like that. But we also found that volunteers and others were afraid of um, if somebody didn't answer any of those questions of asking that question and why like, could we offend them like, oh, are you saying I'm a person with a disability? What are you saying about me, right? When, you know, the individual may not have disclosed. So here we have this handout, it's a really easy handout on why ask the disability question at VITA sites and why it's important. And then on the right hand of the screen, these all can be downloaded on our website, is that this provides why ask the disability question and it's a script and some VITA programs just take the script and have it sitting at the VITA site at the desk or on their intake um, um, clipboard. Um, that then they can read why this question is being asked and why it's important to ask and that it's, you know, looking like it won't exclude them from anything, but to be used to hopefully identify additional tax credits, but also, you know, data finding and things like that. From what we hear from VITA programs that have been using this is that and um, uh, has increased um, the number of individuals who have responded specifically to the disability, to disability questions on the intake form. And so again, a simple, simple tool um, that we have found to have quite an impact. So please check that out. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we have quick reference guides that you'll be able to access. These are quick reference guides on uh, ABLE accounts and tax time savings. They can be printed out. You can send individuals the links. It gives them just a brief overview. And then the second page provides them where to go for more information on how to link. And these quick reference guides have been so popular. And so we keep creating them and developing them because we find that individuals in the small um, information that is available in plain language that um, individuals um, and case managers, VITA volunteers and so forth really benefit from um, these quick materials that they can give to individuals for them to explore more information. On our website, we, um, and thanks to the support from Share Our Strengths, we were able to um, uh, upload several new um, quick reference guides on a variety of topics. So please um, check them out. Next slide, please. Um, this particular slide just has a um, handout on the importance of person first language. And so um, the slide um, our, our handout is a great handout. Um, that can be downloaded and shared with VITA volunteers or during your training that you provide for tax volunteers. And this handout provides examples of person first language. Very important that, it, that we use um, people first language. So this um, is a, uh, on the screen, um, provides a screenshot of that handout. Next slide, please. On this particular slide that you'll be able to download as an additional tool, many sites ask us about how do we provide accommodation requests for taxpayers with disabilities. An accommodation request could be um, an individual might need to have the intake form read out aloud to them and um, somebody else marking the questions. Another accommodation request could be that an individual might request a, a sign language interpreter. Um, another individual might request um, for information to be um, provided in Braille or large print. So this particular um, handout helps you um, uh, look at um, how do you make accommodation requests um, and how do you create that particular statement to assure that all taxpayers that come into your VITA sites have equal access? 
Um, this is a very popular um, uh, resource and um, has been um, uh, something that has been um, put together based on the feedback that we have received from our office hours as well um, over the past five months. So um, another great resource for you to go to. All right, so the next few slides I'll share for your marketing and outreach, and then we're going to go into some IRS resources and then go to our guest, um, our other guest speaker. So are you ready for this? Next slide, please. On, oops, no, please, sorry. I said next slide twice. Nope, you're perfect, Ashley. Thank you so much. So on this particular slide are custom promotional flyers. So um, what we have learned is um, through the last few months um, with the office hours and the feedback from our network is um, what are promotional materials that resonate and that would be beneficial for the disability community. And so on the screen are three different promotional materials that you'll be able to download free of charge Feel free on our website. And the first one says you earned your earned in tax income tax credit. And it lists three different myths and the right answer um, to eliminate those myths for individuals on why they should file their um, taxes. Oftentimes, individuals uh, with disabilities, if they're receiving a benefit, are afraid um, to file because they would lose their benefit. So then this has um, uh, the correct information on, uh, on that particular map. Um, also, thinking, oh, I didn't make enough money, and so they have it. Then it also um, provides the link to where they can either call 211 or they can also um, go to the IRS VITA locator, which I know is still being updated, um, that can be there. And the thing is, is that you'll see in the lower right-hand corner, there is a box with um, uh, dots around it. And it's because these flyers can also be customizable where you can insert your logo if you choose. So one of the flyers is your earned income tax credit, talking about the myth. The second flyer talks about prepare and file your taxes for free and do you qualify and what you need to bring. And then the third flyer is you earned it and it tells you items that you can need uh, that you might need to pull together to um, file your taxes. And again, it has the links to um, different sites. You know, if you use this, you could also put your website um, you know, in there for them to direct. But each of these flyers are downloadable from our website. Next slide, please. All right, so the next two slides are the same thing, but we'll just share this. So one of the things that we have done based on feedback is we put together a Google Doc. Your communications team is going to love you, um, hopefully, after this, or if you happen to handle the social media for your um, organization or your program. Um, we, uh, thanks to our colleague, Kish Pisani, um, has put together some various social media um, content for you in a Google Doc. Um, that you're free to download. Uh, we'll be updating this on a regular basis, but um, their social media content and it's broken down to the topic, the audience, the key message, and where the source is, where the source came from. But you have social media content that has been created for you. Some of them have been created by other organizations, so we kind of curated as well. But there's disability specific content that we put together that you are able to use. This is something else that was asked from our network, and we are happy to be able to meet that to help you boost your uh, opportunity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. Next slide, please. The other piece about this is, is there's also news articles, hashtags, and accounts to follow. Um, so, um, you know, in this spreadsheet, we'll have it, and like I said, we will be updating it with new um, social media tips techniques as well. So again, these are messages that you can just go in and cut and paste. And they're already written with like the hashtags and everything. So, you know, you could have 26 weeks of um, social media content specifically for individuals with disabilities um, here in this as well. All right. So 
with that, I know we shared with you a lot of new tools. I hope you're as excited, excited as we are um, with these new tools and um, that you will be able to access. Um, we hope to be able to continue to provide um, uh, and address the needs um, to help sites boost their capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities and increase the number of individuals with disabilities that do access free tax preparation services. Um, what I'd like to do now um, on the slide is just our previous webinars you'll be able to access. But what I'd like to do for just a couple minutes, I'd like to turn it over to Don Dill with the IRS. He did our last two webinars for us and we greatly appreciate and um, have him share with us um, uh, a few of the additional IRS resources, and then we'll go into a Q&A with our special guest. Don, I'll turn it over to you, please. Thank you, Michael. Uh, always appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Thank you for all the participants for joining in. I know it's a busy time of the year. Uh, the IRS is, uh, and the organization I work for, SPEC, uh, are always privileged to work with the National Disability Institute and, and so appreciative of all their work to share this information. It's, it's spectacular, Michael, so thank you for that. I'll go to the next slide. I, I, I wanted to just highlight four, four locations that I found on irs.gov that I think would be some additional information. I just wanna be candid up front. None of it's as good as the information Michael just shared with you. It's much, uh, the information that NDI is much more user friendly. So I, I strongly recommend you use those, but I do wanna give you some places on irs.gov where those, uh, those of you joining can find more information. So first up there is the uh, website for accessible IRS tax products. And I'm sure some of you are probably not aware that we are making a more concentrated effort to provide uh, alternative formats of, of publications you know, including in Braille and large print, um, as well as accessible formats. So this page right here will give you some more information on how you can uh, request copies of, 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 for example, the Braille and large print, have some phone numbers on there. And I know uh, phone numbers are not our best friends in the IRS, but you'll find that you're uh, able to get through those pretty easily. So take a look at that page for some more information on accessible IRS tax products. Then the second link I wanted to highlight here was, was our link, as Michael mentioned in part of his presentation, that we do have some ASL, American Sign Language videos. And I'm sure most of you are going to be uh, quite surprised to know that the IRS has its own YouTube channel, probably not one that you normally subscribe to. But um, we, we do, in fact, have a, our own uh, YouTube channel with various videos on tax tips and things about security and identity theft. And I just wanted to highlight to you that part of that page is on ASL, um, ASL videos. And again, they go over such things as tax tips, ID theft. Uh, there's even things for small business uh, folks who are deaf and hard of hearing. And so again, just some interesting formats. They're only about two to five minutes. So very easy to to look at and access. And of course, I know for many that's a, a valuable resource. So the third one I wanted to, to highlight to you was our page that uh, has our specific disability related products. And again, this goes through a whole form uh, or a real uh, continuum of forms, anywhere from itemized deductions, Schedule A for those who are a little bit more familiar with tax lingo, but stuff that's on the credits for the elderly or disabled, uh, some of the credits that are sp very specific to persons with disabilities, as well as some of our uh, overall publications, such as uh, Publication 17, which is the, if you will, the, the guidebook for tax folks when it comes to anything related to taxes. So again, just another way to receive those documents in a format that's more accessible and more in tune with what folks need. And then last but not least, I do want to point out that we have a that we do have a separate page uh, uh, for more information for persons with disabilities. Talks a lot about the specific tax uh, benefits for a person or, or family member with a disability. And included in that page are such things as tax topics. 
that relate directly to some of these issues. Uh, for example, Tax Topic 102 um, is tax assistance for individuals with disabilities and the hearing impaired, again, relates to a lot of the great information Michael just shared with you about VITA and other things. And I always like to highlight on these calls, we do have an overall publication, publication 907, uh, 907, which is titled Tax Highlights for Persons with Disabilities. So to me, that's always a, a good go-to guide for, for folks getting into this arena, uh, make sure they understand what specific areas of the tax code have uh, individual preferences or individual uh, issues that, high, that, are, that are specific to persons with disabilities. So again, just some more uh, resources for you to take advantage of. And again, I wanna thank NDI for the opportunity to do this series of webinars with you. And uh, just wanna again, congratulate them on their extraordinary resources that they're providing and just give my highest recommendation, recommendation to uh, each participant on, these, uh, on this webinar to go explore those um, and use them uh, in your day-to-day -day operations. So Michael, I'll uh, turn it back to you. Great, thank you so much, Don. We really appreciate it. And thank you again for doing the previous webinar. A lot of great information and um, everyone will be able to access the webinar, previous webinar. And um, looking in the chat, um, you know, talking about the different um, materials, you everyone will receive the slides. Yes, and uh, I know they were a little slight, um, small with the screenshots. We just wanted to put a screenshot um, uh, on the slide. And so we will make sure you'll have all links to all of the downloads that you'll be able to download. We're just providing an overview at the moment. Um, so if you didn't catch all the links, no worries. You're going to get the, the PowerPoint and um, access to the slides. Great. Well, we're very fortunate to have Sarah Johnson, who is the co-founder and chief operating officer of the Cash Campaign of Maryland, um, which Sarah has been a longtime partner of the National Disability Institute. We really appreciate. And so um, what we'd like to do is to bring Sarah on and um, just have a conversation on some of the strategies that they've been able to do over the years to share with you all as well. So Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great, great, great. So Sarah, um, for those on the webinar who may not be familiar with CAS uh, Campaign of Maryland, um, can you share just a little bit about um, CAS, I call it CAS Maryland, CAS Campaign of Maryland, if I'm getting yeah. it correct here. Oh, yeah, good. Please. Yeah. Um, well, I want to echo Don's words, first of all, just to say what a pleasure it is to be here. And thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and what a joy it is to be with um, fellow people who care so much about learning about this work and really um, quality implementation to make sure everyone has access. Um, so again, my name is Sarah, and I am, I often joke that I'm contractually obligated to say that CASH is an acronym that stands for Creating Assets, Savings, and Hope. We've been around in the Baltimore area doing free tax preparation work um, since 2001, um, and so we just are known as CASH around here, um, the CASH Campaign of Maryland. So we are a statewide nonprofit, and we do work in sort of three specific areas. The first is around direct service. Services. So we do run a, a large um, free tax preparation program. We also do benefit screening and case management, um, financial education and financial coaching, run a lot of sort of direct service programs in the community. The other sort of bucket of work that we do is around uh, um, technical assistance, training, and the favorite buzzword, capacity building. So we really believe in building a bench. We don't believe in bu building an empire. So we really want to make sure that other nonprofit organizations, government agencies, Whoever will listen um, and wants to learn about economic security and financial security is trained up and has the tools that they need to do this work. So we do a lot of that type of um, work in the field as well. And then the third piece of work that we do is around our um, advocacy work and, uh, and direct lobbying. So we have three registered lobbyists on our team. We do a lot around policy work and really see a connection between all of those three things, right? The, the work we do in the field, building the field and the capacity of organizations and making sure that there's good policies in place as well. Um, 
So we have been really implementing beta since the beginning. We, that is sort of our, our origin is doing this free tax preparation work. And I think from the beginning have been um, really making sure that our services are geared to um, serve people with disabilities um, and have been working alongside NDI to be able to do that work quite a bit. So uh, we have tried it all, right? In terms of integrating services at tax time, um, to make sure that we can do more at, to leverage tax time uh, to, to connect people to other financial services in that moment um, when they're there and making sure that those are accessible um, as well um, and being um, aware of what those um, opportunities and challenges are. Great. So Sarah, in looking at some of the strategies that you've all, that you um, Cash Campaign in Maryland has been implementing over the yep. years, um, can you share some specifics on, um, you know, the intentionality that you put forth to serve taxpayers with disabilities? Um, has there been any, um, any specific, or, you know, details that you could share with the audience? Certainly. So when we first started working on this, we, um, our, our data showed that only about 5% of our clients identified as having a disability. And we had a hunch that, um, we could do a lot better. <laughs> and we were, you know, we were sort of a, a new organization, new program, and began working actually with NDI really closely and um, working very closely with the mayor's office um, to try to reach more um, organizations and reach into the community more to make sure that people knew about our services, knew that they were free. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of the, the work in our early days was was really just the ground game. And this is before all the amazing materials that you folks have produced that we use and the IRS has produced. You know, we we use your materials constantly. So I was really taking notes at the beginning of this of, of all the, the great stuff, the new, the new things you folks have produced. But in our early days, it was really just the ground game of getting in front of and with other groups that were working to make sure that they were serving um, people with disabilities and, and all different types of disabilities. And you know, that had some, it, it took a long time, I will say, to build trust and to build those relationships um, before we started to see any sort of uptake, um, you know, in, in our, in those numbers. Um, I'm proud to say that now we have about 25% of people that, um, that come through our tax sites identify as having a disability. Um, and so, you know, we, we think that that round game has paid off in addition to some of our other strategies. So, um, you know, one of the things we are really intentional about is incorporating this into all of our training. This is not an afterthought. This is something that it, we build right into all the training that we do. And we also build it into our budget. So making sure that, um, and building into all of our marketing, right? So this, this is something that we think about as just part of our services. It's not an add-on or an extra. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about you know, some of the marketing pieces that we do, right? There's, we have done sort of specific days where we have just uh, held appointments. We are an appointment-based um, system in the Baltimore metro area. So we have held specific appointments on certain days so that organizations that might have um, a client population that they particularly have a connection with could say, look, we need 10 appointments at, um, at the library site and we can make sure we can accommodate that so that we can have an interpreter there. We can make sure that the environment, if it's um, sometimes a really chaotic, busy place and people need to have a more calm environment, um, we can make sure that we are providing that. And so I think in some ways having just sort of some boutique appointments available for people um, and working with uh, organizations to help organize that has been a good way for us to continue to gain trust um, and to and to make sure our services are accessible. Um, you know, as I talked about building it into our budget, right? We have to make sure we have, um, we, there's a lot of great ASL um, support and, and things like that, but just making sure if we need interpreters that we also are prepared to pay for them if we need them. Um, I'm not sure if there's questions in the chat either. I don't, I wanna pause and not just sort of over talk if folks have, have specific questions. Well, I, I just wanna say, um, so I am just so impressed. I remember the early days. I didn't know that it's got up to 25%. So um, you made my day. I just want you to know that I'm sharing that figure um, uh, on the increase that you've seen in, in serving taxpayers with disabilities. 
And, you know, um, one of the things that I think is really important and interesting is, you know, we talk about um, sign language interpreters or American Sign Language interpreters, you know, um, some organizations are able to collaborate or you just gave an example. Um, but uh, oftentimes, you know, we share too about the importance of putting it in your budget. So could you just share a little bit more about the that piece of it to give advice to to centers of like you know so putting their budgets together for free tax preparation of you know what is that kind of figure or how do you kind of look at what that amount might be when it comes to accommodations certainly so um you know on the I want to start, start with the marketing side. So making sure that we are meeting with our sites before we start marketing um, our services and what sites might be accessible or not. We live in an, in an old Rust Belt city. And so not all of our row house organizations are ADA accessible. And so making sure that we're real clear with that. We've actually even worked with some of our organizations to help them fundraise to have lifts and elevators and um, things like that installed, ramps installed. Um, so that they can be more accessible. So I think, um, you know, when you think about budget, right, there's those big ticket items of, of accessibility. And then there's just also building in, we always do sort of a costing out each year. We call some um, interpreters to make sure that we have an up-to-date sense of the cost. I think the last uh, budget I we got was like $130 an hour. And so it is good for the budget if we can have some days where we know we 100% need an interpreter and we have scheduled um, a number of tax appointments for that day so that we can have a couple interpreters there um, and just sort of focus it. But we also on a dime can sort of make sure that we can uh, accommodate folks if needed, um, if they request it. And I think making sure upfront in, in many modalities that we are, that people can request um, support and accommodation in advance, so putting that on our marketing materials, materials, putting that on a request on our website. We have a lot of people who request accommodation via direct messenger on Facebook. So making sure that we're monitoring that if people have questions and concerns. As I mentioned earlier, we also do, because we do appointments, we do a lot of educating before our tax site, sites open of our United Way team. So we contract with United Way and their 211 um, first call for help. Uh, and they schedule all of our appointments for us. So within the text that they read and within our training, we're making sure that they know, um, you know, what sites are best fit if someone is disclosing that they um, need an accommodation and they will directly call us if they're not sure or if they want to make sure they're flagging something for us so that um, people are getting good customer service and that we are making sure that everyone feels comfortable at the tax site um, and is able to get the help that they need. That's great, Sarah. That is, that's wonderful advice um, to share. So thank you. I think one of the other pieces you um, shared that's really important is um, about trust. And I think that's a, a key piece for, um, that we look at because at the same time, you know, within the disability community, we've been taught um, we can't save money or at times looking at our public benefits and, um, okay. you know, the, the pieces on that. And so, you know, it's, it's really identifying who are those trusted partners. So um, do you have any advice on, um, for sites on how they build that trust with other organizations or um, with uh, the disability community? Um, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, obviously, you've increased from 5% to 25%, yeah. so you've really built that trust. So what advice do you have? I would say the turnaround really happened for us is when in the, quote, off-season, right? So not during tax season when our tax staff and everyone else is a little um, pulling our hair out, trying to keep up with things. But, you know, we spent time in the off-season, in the summer and in the fall before we get really busy meeting with providers. And so that means reaching out to them. That means scheduling time to go sit down and meet with them um, and explain what our program is because it, it's like getting those that buy-in was the turning point for us. Once we sat down with people and sometimes it took multiple meetings, um, it was it, we had to go beyond just the email. We had to sit down with people 
make sure they had access to our materials, answer their questions, else they didn't feel comfortable being a broker of these services to their community. They were, they were rightly so, I think, worried that there was something, you know, there was some hook, right? There was something behind this. And so that took, that just took um, people power, right? You know, just building those relationships and it didn't happen overnight, but, um, and we still do it today, right? Because there's turnover in organizations. So we continue to to meet with our partners and to build, bring new partners into the fold and, um, you know, continue to try and work on building that, tr that trust. Because I think that has really been the game changer for us. Excellent. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing these insights. And, um, you know, possibly in the new year, we might um, uh, do another um, piece where we explore some of these ideas even further. Um, and so we want to thank you so much for um, the work you're doing in the cash campaign of Maryland to um, increase or boost capacity to serve taxpayers with disabilities. Um, so thank you for, for your time. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Great. So we have one minute left. So if we could go to the next couple slides. Um, next slide, please. Um, please, after the webinar, please um, complete uh, your evaluation. We really um, value your feedback. One of the questions in the evaluation is if you would like a follow-up call um, to talk more about free tax preparation services or other pieces and, um, or be connected with groups in your area um, in the new year, we'd be sure to follow up with you on that. So that's of interest. You can do that. Next slide, please. You can also send an email to ask at ndi-inc.org. Again, that's ASK ask at ndi-inc.org. I want to say thank you so much to Don Dill with the Internal Revenue Service for coming on today and sharing some additional resources and being for a great partner to the National Disability Institute and um, for all of the work they're doing to increase the outreach to the taxpayers with disabilities. Thank you so much to Sharon, Sarah Johnson with the Cash Campaign of Maryland. Greatly appreciate the work that you're doing and for coming and sharing your insights today. And thank you to um, Anna Rivera with um, Share Our Strength and to uh, Lillian at Share Our Strength and to the whole team um, for uh, being intentional, which we greatly appreciate of um, the inclusion of taxpayers with disabilities in this um, particular work that, that they're doing. You know, we're really making a difference um, together um, and collectively um, where together we are building a better financial future for individuals with disabilities. Disabilities. You know, the Americans with Disabilities Act states that one of the proper goals is economic self-sufficiency, where economic self-sufficiency is their civil right as a person with a disability. Um, and uh, free tax preparation services and favorable tax credit is one of those pieces that help us um, move up the rungs of the economic ladder and make sure that that civil rights legislation where it states economic self-sufficiency is one of our rights um, that we can accomplish that and we can achieve it. And so we thank you for all of the work that everyone is doing to assure that individuals with disabilities um, access free tax preparation services, but also um, have the tools and resources to help to build economic self-sufficiency and financial wellness. Um, we hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. We look forward to circling back with you in the new year. And um, as you launch your tax program in January, please feel free to reach out to the National Disability Institute. And also be sure to access the various resources and tools that we have shared today. You will have access to the website, um, or to the um, PowerPoint and to the links as well. Thank you to my colleagues, um, Ashley Price, for joining us today, as well as Kish Basani for all of her leadership and work with this particular project as well. Um, I thank you all so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.